We know about these relentless channel crossings, OK? Yesterday, like I said, 755 individuals detected on our shores. We all know about the fact that now it's hit 100,000 since 2018. But what doesn't get spoken about enough for me is the potential cultural implications of this. So the public have major concerns about the economy. Yeah, fine. Housing, safety, crime, the use of taxpayers' money. We, we all know about all of this. But with so many people, mostly young men, coming from countries with very different values, some would argue morals, cultures, should this also be a cause for concern? I'm asking a simple question. Do you think that women are more or less safe on the streets as a result of mass illegal immigration? Has this uncontrolled influx now become an invasion? I'm joined by former government special advisor James Price, a fabulous addition to indeed this show and any other one as well. Uh, James, has it become an invasion? Thank you so much for having me. Good evening. I think invasion is obviously uh, a word that implies that there is some kind of... Uh, uh, deep motive that is being controlled from some central point. I think the real nub here, the problem, is that the policymakers in Whitehall, in the Home Office and wherever else, they're very poor at being able to tackle the sorts of questions that you're asking about. Questions about culture, questions about morality, questions about religion, perhaps. These are very, very difficult things, especially in our, our slightly uh, morally straightened times when people rightly don't want to cause offence. They get very nervous about causing offence. But it makes it very difficult for policymakers to be able to factor these sorts of things in. You know, you've got the Office for Budget Responsibility, which is a, an independent marker that, that rightly can hold government to account. It says immigration is a wonderful thing. Um, lots of new young people coming in who will contribute to the workforce and taxes and all these sorts of things. But there's no real marker, as you say, that will work out cultural issues, religious issues, for good or for ill. But, but is it not common sense? I mean, if you have a lot of young men from countries where they treat women very, very differently, where they treat gay people very, very differently, and where there is a different moral compass, I suppose you could argue, and then there is no pressure on them to integrate whatsoever, we are going to end up with those problems in Britain, aren't we? And shouldn't that be a cause for concern? I think we can take this as a, a ratcheting effect. If you introduce an awful lot of one set of demographics, no matter who they are or what they will be, that will create some kind of imbalance. In this case, exactly as you say, lots of young men. Well, that means that there are behavior, not as many uh, future partners for them as they might like, and that can cause some problems. You see that happening in China as a result of the one-child policy. You can see this as a result of wars historically. Ratcheted up again, as you say, if there are people who have different cultural mores, that can be a challenge if you don't have a very activist policy of helping people integrate, of learning what it is that makes this country so tolerant and so wonderful and so great. And the problem is that we haven't really seen an awful lot of those kinds of policies even be attempted by Central Whitehall and Westminster. And when you ally that to the fact that, mm. take in the Home Office, we have these stories that lots of civil servants are saying, I think this is really mean and immoral and I'm not going to do it, then it makes it even more difficult for the democratically elected government to try and pursue any of those ends at all. But is this not a Europe-wide problem? I can't help but feel as though my future children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren will look back and scratch their heads and wonder why the people of Europe decided that their culture was not worth preserving. Yeah, and this is something that we're not comfortable talking about. You know, I, I, uh, I like to watch on GB News and we talk about how great Britain is, Europe as well, you know, maybe with the exception of the French. You know, we're very happy to talk about no, some no. of the wonders uh, of European civilization and culture and the wonderful things they've given the world. I think what we might end up seeing is that continental Europe will start doing a lot of things to stem migration flows that we in Britain, who have been more heavily influenced perhaps by American liberalism, will start to find very unpleasant. And you might even see in 10 years' time that the campaign to rejoin the EU will suddenly become a right-wing issue rather than a left-wing one. Fascinating point. You imagine? That, that, is, that is a really good point, and I'm glad you've raised it, because we know that border security, since we voted for Brexit, has got worse, basically, hasn't it, really? We have decided, as far as I can tell, to adopt almost none of the benefits that we could have done in the wake of the Brexit referendum. Deliberately so, remarkably so, stupidly so, in my view. We are waiting, I think, for the Italians, for the French, for the Germans, for a few other nations, the Greeks maybe, to act 
hardcore against what's going on. And then we will do it, as opposed to us just taking the lead. And I, I find that staggering. What are we so scared of? Why are we so afraid of standing alone and doing what's in our own best interest? I think it's a really great question. And I, and I think, again, when you look at the British population, every time Red Nose Day, Children in Need comes along, we dig deep in our pockets. Look at what's happened with Ukraine, the visa scheme. And at the moment, the place I work, we've hired a young uh, Ukrainian who came over uh, on the, the visa scheme. Uh, incredibly impressive person. Obviously, she's here to be kept safe from the horrible war. But every, every young, uh, economically active chap who comes over on a small boat takes up resources and space, yep. especially with the housing crisis we have at the moment, and frankly saps away some of the goodwill that could be being spent on either this girl or any other person who is either in massive need yep. or perhaps the best and the brightest. And we can't take everybody into the world. Britain can't be the only place where people go to realise their dreams. You can't derive an ought from an is, as David Hume once said. Uh, and I think you're right. I think there is a fundamental problem. How you get to address it requires uh, a change in the civil services culture, ironically, about the way that they look at culture. Yes, yeah, so actually, very well put. James, thank you very much. An absolute pleasure. That's James Price, though, as a former government special advisor. I think